This video is going to give you some basic instructions for uploading documents to NDIA's repository. When you receive your credentials and you log in, you'll see a screen similar to this, or perhaps it will be my workspace. But in any case, you'll see a menu at the top and you want to click on Add Item. And whether you're an, an adding a document or a website, this first screen is going to look the same. The first thing you need to do is to upload a file. If you're uploading a PDF, obviously you'll upload the PDF. If you are linking to a website, you'll upload a screenshot or a screen that you capture of the website. Uh, make sure you capture enough of the website to give a representative view of what the website's all about, what it would look like. So I will upload my PDF. And you see when I uploaded it, this web resource URL box appeared. So if you were going to link to a website, you put the URL in this box. Whenever you see a red asterisk next to the uh, description of the box, that means it's a required field. And many of the fields are, have dropped down menus such as language, has a nice array of languages to choose from. So this is the document I'm uploading. If you peek at it. So you enter the title here. And the next box is the description field. Just put in a brief summary of what the document or website is all about. If there are any really important keywords you want to make sure someone has the ability to search, you can put it in the description field. Then for resource type, you're given three choices. Program guidance will help someone with an initiative or program. Training uh, is training courses, uh, so curricula or other training materials. And then research or policy for reports, uh, summaries, things from organizations. So this one is a task force report, so it's research or policy. The next is target audience, and you have the opportunity to select as many of these that are applicable to your item as you like. So this one, I'm selecting community-based organizations. You can add another field just by clicking add another and selecting the drop down. And if you ever want to delete a field, um, you just click on this here, the little X. So this one is applicable to digital inclusion practitioners, local government, and state government. The idea is to have provide as many access points as are relevant for the item that you have. You want to give people as many chances as possible to find your materials. For the date, you need to put the month, the day, and the year. I'm fortunate because this actually gives me all three of those items. If you don't have a month or a date, come as close to an estimate as you can. So I'm on January 3rd. The creator is the author, pretty much applicable to, uh, analogous to the author. So it's an individual organization who created the content. The publisher is frequently the organization, but you want to give a double check in the document to make sure um, sometimes the creator will be an individual and the publisher an organization. You just want to consult the document that you're working with. The series field is a way of to link different um, items that you upload. So let's say you have a curricula from a course that you're offering and individual pieces you're uploading separately. You can link them together by using the course name as the series. Version is if you have, for example, an executive summary that you're uploading or some other draft of the report. You can link them all, you make 
you indicate which you have in the version field. Geo coverage is a nice feature. You can um, indicate which state or community or county or region your item covers. Uh, so this one is Minnesota. It's a free field, so you can just um, enter whichever describes the area the best. Next are the fields where you remember in the in a couple screens ago you got to pick between program guidance and training and then research and policy. So then you can enter descriptors under all of these. Um, Headings. So the first one is program guidance. Um, with the thought in mind that we're creating as many access points as possible, even though my document wasn't program guidance, I did I categorized it as research and policy. I still will use these fields if they're applicable, just because they give a richer description. So this one would be strategic planning. and budgeting or something like that. This is very much about broadband and the program topic. Under training, you can drill down and provide quite a lot of detail about the audience for the training or the class, and not just the topic, but also the how the program's delivered, the learner information. Um, again, all these are drop-down menus and you can pick as many fields as you'd like. So under research and policy, the one I had was a report, and the policy topic was home broadband and infrastructure. Under administrative data, if you have any particular information you want to highlight about the material, or item that you're uploading, you can note that in the fields here. The next are permissions. It's in drop down, and you indicate the license for the item. And then you indicate whether it's public or private. You'll want to put, unless there's an unusual case, but you'll put that the um, all the fields are public. Then all you have to do is click the yellow button to submit for review. What happens next is your item is goes to moderation, and someone will just give it a quick review, and then it will be uploaded to the repository. Thank you so much for your willingness to contribute items. We really appreciate it.